Seattle, where tree-hugging hippies and tech gurus collide for what makes quite the interesting city. There are all shapes and sizes here, gay, straight, white, black, or purple polka dot, it doesn't really matter. Diversity is a point of pride for the citizens of Seattle. As long as you are nice and have a good attitude about the rain, then you will find yourself having a good time. Oh, and rain it does. All the time for someone who was born in the desert, it took some serious getting used to. Gore-Tex jackets are a way of life here. Screw the umbrellas and throw on a jacket. Deal with it like the rest of us, some may say. Before anything else, Seattle is a port city. Cargo ships from all over the world find themselves here carrying who knows what. However, with every port city, that means seafood. Lots of seafood. If you're a foodie like me, you will find yourself in a paradise of salmon, clams, and sushi. When I got here, I typically thought of Seattle as the home of tech giants like Amazon or Google. Its inhabitants pale, running on a fierce addiction to caffeine in order to satisfy their need to code 24-7. However, Seattle is green, very green. No matter which direction you look, there's life growing all around you. Like many before me, I idiotically had no idea what Seattle was all about. I'm in the apartment now. Um, first stop's Pike Place. Go check that out. Then my favorite, my personal favorite, um, the International District. Um, go check out the Space Needle and maybe go over to Bainbridge. Gonna have to take a ferry for that though, so we'll see about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to show you guys Seattle and where I've been living for the past year and a half, pretty much ever since COVID started and before I left for Spain initially. Um, but yeah, gonna kick off the channel in a big way and uh, got a lot in store for you guys. A lot of content that I'm gonna be producing uh, this summer. Um, heading over to Europe. And then from there, I'm gonna be going back to Spain and living there for seven months, eight months. So yeah, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing a lot. First stop, next place. The gum wall is like impressive for about two seconds. Cause then you realize what it actually is. It's like years of people just putting their gum on the wall. You're not sitting in high school and wondering what's under Johnny's desk, hoping he's got a more impressive display of gum underneath his desk. It's kind of gross, but it's one of those things you go see for five minutes and then you're done. Then there's this spot. In the heart of Pike's Place, Lowell's has one of the best bread bowls I've ever had. Dare I say, even better than San Francisco. Now that can be argued, but if you do come here, Lowell's should be one of your first stops in Pike's Place. They know what's up here, and with a nice view of the pier, it is hard to beat. As cool as Pike's Place is, and you should definitely come here. Now you gotta get the bread bowl, you gotta go to Beecher's. Um, what's more impressive is the next place I'm taking you. And this is what got me so much more about excited about Seattle than Pike's Place ever did. Um, and that's the International District. So I'm excited to show you guys that and just the amount of diversity there is insane. So that's where we're heading next. When I first stepped into this part of Seattle, I ignorantly called it Chinatown. Don't be me, man. Avoid being a tourist, and for your sake, don't go around saying that in every quote-unquote Chinatown you may find yourself in. You may be dead wrong to call it that. 
at least for this spot of Seattle, it is correctly known as the International District, as there are cultures and people that have found a place to call home. And there are lots of them, from Japan, China, Thailand, Korea, Vietnam, and Taiwan. I'm pretty sure there is even some Mongolian thrown in there. And you know, I'm probably even missing a few. But you get the point, there's a lot of cultures here and a lot of different foods to be trying. It is a solid 12 blocks stuffed with over 200 years of food history from countries practically a world apart from our own. Within these 12 blocks, one can find dim sum from China, doughy balls of protein or vegetables, or even a ramen bowl from Japan. A dish like ramen is something that has the ability to blow your preconceived notions about the potential for food straight through the roof. The International District is not the place for sightseeing cityscapes or taking selfies with your friends. Sure, you can do that, but if you waste your time fishing for Instagram likes, then you are missing out. Look close enough, and you will see something worth releasing your inner glutton on. I have been here on multiple occasions. Every time I have not been disappointed. I highly recommend Hong Kong Bistro for all day dim sum. Cow Cow for some barbecue, or for the adventurous types, you can head over to Viet Hoa for some live seafood. However, for myself, I'm heading to the Hong Kong Bistro for some dim sum. No, oh, I was deceived. They didn't have dumplings. That's okay. That's okay. Because we got a sound bowl in a plastic thing. Seafood. Um, it smells freaking delicious. Um, but I'm bummed, dude. I wanted some freaking dumplings. That's alright, though. It was good, too. It doesn't look appetizing, so I'm not going to show you. But yeah, man. International District is where it's at. If you want to eat well in Seattle, definitely got to come here. Um, I mean, there's just so many options, you know. Like I said before, there's just everything you can think of from you know, sushi, dumplings, ramen. Just, oh my god, the ramen down here is incredible. But yeah, I'm thinking next we're gonna go to check out the Space Needle. Um, and then after that, we're all done. Here we are. Space Needle. There it is, that's it. That crow, did you see that? Oh my god, that crow's trying to dive bomb me. Shut up, I'm trying to do something here. What's cool about the Space Needle is, there's a bar that sits right at the top of this thing. And um, it's pretty sweet, because it rotates, and you can sit up there and have a drink. It's pretty cool. I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure there's a um, full functioning restaurant up there. Um, but definitely go check that out. It's not a bad place to get a nice view of Seattle and stuff. Um, what I like about this area, jeez, dude, this crow hates my guts. I gotta walk somewhere else. It's gonna attack me. Jesus, fuck, good deal. I'm getting attacked by a freaking crow while I'm trying to do this video. Mess your day up, bro. Try it. What's nice about this area, other than the freaking crow that's trying to take my head off, is the Chihuly Garden. And Chihuly was a super interesting guy. He was this glass maker that made amazing, huge pieces, like 30 feet, um, 30 feet tall. Um, and his museum is right over here, right next to the Space Needle. Um, the funny thing about Chihuly is he, he would just stand there staring at the piece as all of his assistants would put it together. Right. He would ask his assistants, um, well, does that look good? And everyone's like, dude, we don't know that you're the artist. Super intricate, just incredibly made. I swear to God. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this video right here because this crow's literally trying to kill me. Um, but yeah, Space News is pretty dope. Go check it out. Um, cool restaurant at the top, awesome bar too. Um, and also check out Chihuly. He's a super impressive artist, definitely. All right, I'm out of here. This crow doesn't want me here.
Alright, goodbye.